Happy New Year to you. I celebrated the New Year in a fairly muted way um, by watching the last episode of Season 2 of The Mandalorian, by getting some P.F. Chang's takeout, by uh, doing a little bit of reading and watching the ball drop with my best friend. It was just the two of us. Um, it was a wonderful evening, though, uh, so I hope that you had a Happy New Year as well. Um, but being the old man that I am, you know, I was surprised I made it to midnight. I'm uh, cautiously optimistic for the coming year. Um, we're still seeing a lot of cases in our area here in Cecil County, Maryland. Um, we have folks from our church who have been battling the virus. Um, it's hitting closer to home for many folks, and in talking with church members who have had it, some of it has been a very difficult battle. Uh, for some of them, and others have had really minor symptoms, uh, but it's real folks, and uh, it's good to continue uh, playing it safe and to hope that we uh, hit herd immunity at some point this year with the vaccine. Um, I know the estimates that I've seen uh, put that at around mid-year, you know, June or July, somewhere around in there, but we definitely still have some challenging months ahead of us. Uh, so, uh, we must persevere through it all. And I'm reminded of some scripture passages. Uh, for example, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of crap, if I can talk, a great cloud of witnesses, uh, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured, endured the cross, uh, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, um, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And then Paul, he writes in Romans chapter 8, verses 23 to 25, We ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption to sonship, uh, the redemption of our bodies. For in this we hope, uh, for in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they have already had? Uh, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Uh, I love Paul's words here as he writes to the church in Rome. It was written around the year 57, is what uh, most people, most historians think. That's a long time ago, but uh, the truth of it remains, you know, with us 2,000 years later. And uh, the truth is, as I've shared before, and as many of you know, uh, that people of that time suffered a lot. Life was much more difficult uh, then than it is for many of us today. Plagues and famines and poverty and oppression were everyday concerns, not rare phenomena that happen once in a lifetime. And so the people oftentimes despaired, and they were looking for a way out of their suffering. Um, and Paul here is writing to those folks who are despaired and awaiting the redemption of their bodies, uh, who are waiting to, to die and enter into glory. And Paul reminds those people to have hope. And, and he lauds hope as a wonderful gift from God. Um, he lifts hope up as a virtue and something to enjoy in the moment because hope looks towards the future. Hope is what sustains us right now. Um, he reminds the people that hope is... Uh, that is seen as, in fact, no hope at all. Uh, they wouldn't be able to experience the joy of hope, which is a God-given gift, if they uh, received everything that was promised to them at once. And so he promotes patience, uh, living in the hope that comes from God, enjoying the hope uh, that comes from God. Now, I think that's a pretty cool way to look at it, um, that we get the experience of hope now because we're suffering difficulties, because we're going through hardships. Uh, and oftentimes because we suffer, we experience the joy of hope 
that enables us to overcome those difficult times. Um, you know, some of the experiences I've had in life have been pretty painful, but I wouldn't trade them for anything. Um, you know, persevering through it has taught me so many life lessons that I think are of such profound value to me. Uh, I wouldn't be the person I am today without those life lessons. And sometimes those have been painful lessons. I'm able to have hope even though I have Noonan syndrome. Uh, and it's a hope that makes me smile every morning, smile at a new day, smile that Jesus Christ is Lord, smile that I have taken hold of the salvation that's been offered to me by God. Instead of waking up with despair at my situation, I wake up with hope uh, on most days, most days. Some days are still hard and, you know, we all go through periods of difficulty and days where we're really struggling. But Paul is saying, let hope win out in your life. Let it win out over despair more often, you know. Yes, there are things to despair about. And there are days we will despair. Um, there are days that we will experience suffering and difficulties that threaten to overwhelm us. Um, yes, there is suffering to endure, but there is more to hope in. There is more to be happy about. There is more to look forward to. There is more to praise God for. So embrace the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Don't despair over your circ circumstances, but instead find the hope in your circumstances. And patience. <laughs> Paul talks about patience here. Um, that hope gives us patience. That when we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, when we can grasp the hope, uh, then we can have patience. We can endure suffering and hardships and uh, these moments that we wish were just over. Uh, patience is difficult in difficult times. It, it all wears on us, uh, these uh, struggles that we face. Uh, but we keep the prize before us, the good news of the gospel, the promise of eternal life, the promise of a relationship that we can enjoy right now with Christ. You know, I struggle with patience, as I've shared uh, with the congregation before in my sermons. And uh, when I have anything wrong with me health-wise, I want answers immediately. I want the issue to be resolved. I don't want to have to wait and worry. Uh, the same thing goes with anything in life. Um, any hiccup, and I want it resolved right away. I wrong someone, and I want them to forgive me immediately. Uh, hiccup in the internet. Uh, an administrative snafu, I expect everything to be resolved right away. Uh, Paul preaches that in the midst of difficulty and uncertainty, there should be patience. But I think we're conditioned away from patience. Um, Amazon Prime offers two-day delivery and even one-day delivery for free. I can order takeout from a local restaurant and expect to receive a full meal in half an hour. I have access to instant entertainment whenever I want it through my internet or smartphone or iPad or my computer. And I don't have to wait for my favorite show to come on. No, I can just get on Netflix and choose any movie and TV show I feel like watching. I can binge watch it without having to wait for the next episode to come out next week. Every episode's available right away. <laughs> don't even have to wait for commercials anymore. All this convenience. I'm convinced it, it makes me uh, less pa patient uh, as a person. Uh, I've had to intentionally pursue hobbies that help me to be a patient person. Cooking, it's one of my favorite hobbies, and I have to take the time to chop the vegetables, to carefully prepare the sauces and the spices, uh, to slowly simmer my soups. You know, I love to hike. Hiking oftentimes involves hours of walking and many miles to reach a desired scenic overlook or a natural landmark. Um, another important part of my life that I've tried to nurture as well is prayer, um, because prayer really does require much patience. I have so many things I could be doing, but to give an hour to the Lord, praying for those in need in my community, in my church, um, seeking wisdom and guidance from the Lord, waiting, listening, 
I can easily neglect prayer with the busyness of life around me. And waiting for answers when it's in the Lord's timing, accepting answers to my prayers that may be different than I wanted. Uh, prayer is an essential part of our lives, but I uh, fear that for myself, I've had difficulty upholding a strong commitment to prayer in certain seasons of my life. And I really love, uh, though, uh, the serenity prayer. And many of you are probably familiar with it. Um, but one of the common ways that the serenity prayer is prayed is, is God, give me the grace to accept with serenity the things that cannot be changed, courage to change the things which should be changed, and the wisdom to distinguish the one from the other. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Now, that's a prayer. Uh, that's a prayer that matches the encouragement of the book of Hebrews and the wisdom from Paul and the teachings of Jesus about patience and perseverance. I know Reinhold uh, Neber originally prayed a version of the Serenity Prayer back in 1932 and 33. Uh, He's the one who is um, that we attribute to the to be the author of the Serenity Prayer. Um, it spread rapidly across the United States during the Great Depression. Difficult times. Um, but the, the prayer brought comfort to many people who were suffering in that time period. Uh, many people who were losing patience, the Serenity Prayer uh, brought patience into their lives as they were able to pray that prayer daily. And it, took all, it also took hold after the Great Depression, especially with those who were struggling with addiction and alcoholics. Um, it allows them to realize that their um, path to recovery, their path to um, sobriety, it can sometimes be a long journey. It can sometimes be a journey with many ups and downs, hills and valleys, two steps forward, one step back, you know. It, it, and so uh, that prayer, it, it enables them to uh, see the, the truth of the gospel, that, that God is there with us throughout it all. It's become a common prayer for those 12-step recovery programs that lead people towards patience in their recovery. And, and so I hope that you uh, also will continue to make the serenity prayer or a prayer like it, um, the prayer of your heart each and every day, that you'll uh, persevere through these difficult times and take hold of the scriptures that remind us uh, to take heart, to be hopeful, uh, to be people of patience and perseverance. Uh, I know that we daily can take hope uh, in the hope that is found in Jesus Christ and uh, that we can enjoy the gift of hope that comes from God. So um, that's my encouragement to you today is to um, take hold of the hope that God uh, gives you, uh, to find the peace that's beyond all understanding in Christ, uh, to find serenity and yeah and patience and perseverance um, in the messages of Paul and, uh, that we find in the scriptures from Jesus and the authors of uh, the other books of the Bible, uh, that you will seek after the word of God and seek after the Lord, and that you will find uh, the joy that comes from hope in all of that. Uh, it's going to be a joy to be with you. Uh, as a pastor in the coming year. I'm looking forward to this year. Um, I know it was a strange first year for me uh, at Elkton with all the uh, stuff that we had to go through with the pandemic and everything, but I'm looking forward to as we uh, come into 2021 to 
uh, seeing even more what Elkton United Methodist Church is all about and to experience the ministries with you as we uh, hopefully at some point things become, I don't know what the new normal is going to be, who, who knows, but I want to encourage you that I look forward to journeying with you in all of that and that I love you, my prayers are with you, and uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any needs or any prayer requests or um, if you just want to chat, feel free to call the church office, leave me a message and I'll call you back or, you know, but I'm really so happy to be here and so encouraged by the generosity and the selflessness and the and the prayers of the people here at Elkton. And uh, it's been a joy to be with you. And I look forward to another year of it. So God bless you all. Um, and I hope to see you next week at this time. Uh, I'm thinking that I'll probably be dealing with gossip and rumors next week as the primary topic. Uh, so I look forward to diving into the scriptures to talk about uh, gossip and the, the harm that it can do. And uh, so I hope that you have a blessed day and I look forward to seeing you next week at the same time. Uh, take care. Signing off. Goodbye.